Good evening, we are live. Hello and welcome to our Sam World Boss YouTube channel. Uh, if you're watching us live in the stream, welcome. Um, and we have a really great lineup uh, this evening. Um, uh, we've got Scott from the, uh, I always get it wrong, Scott, there we go, from the uh, Isla Reze, uh, who's gonna take us through um, uh, these little car samples that you've got in your, in your packs uh, and show you like the DNA that makes up their their sort of amazing single malt. Talk to you a little bit about the um, about the distillery and the, and uh, yeah, their cast maturation. And if you've got any questions, if you are live, just fire them uh, in the comment section, which is over there. Uh, I'll bring them up. And if you are watching this on the repeat on catch up, um, uh, you can't. So just um, yeah, hope you enjoy enjoy your packs. Um, and yeah, shall we shall we start? Let's introduce Scott. Hi, Scott. Thanks. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks. For, thanks for having us tonight, and um, hopefully, you enjoy going through our, our six cast samples, which are, are pretty unique in, in the whiskey industry. And it, as as you mentioned, it brings us to our first core single malt, which I've drank half a bottle here already. So, <laughs> Just before we went. <laughs> yeah, great. You know, great to to take you through them. Uh, talk a little bit about how the flavors and how Alistair Day, our co-founder, wants them to work together, and pretty relaxed on questions we're you know happy to chat about anything that comes up and um, mm -hmm. yeah any feedbacks welcome that's it so, will we will we get started with the, with the first uh, sample i'll maybe give a running order on them uh, just so people have an idea of you know how we're going to go through them mm -hmm. so we're going to do the, the unpeated first yeah so there's three samples and then there's peated three samples so why don't we go the virgin chinkapin oak Unpeated as the first one. That's the one. And then the second one we'll do will be the we'll do the Bordeaux X Bordeaux red wine casks unpeated. That one as well, slightly different color, which you'll notice, I'm sure. The colors are all different. And then we'll go the X Woodford Reserve Rye unpeated. And then there we go. That's the three unpeated. And we'll do the same order for the peated ones. So the peated X, uh, sorry, peated chinkapin, peated X Bordeaux red wine, and then the peated rye. Now I've got, you do see me here, I've actually got jumbo samples. So, you know, it's not like I'm a giant or <laughs> these are 20 CLs. <laughs> and just so that, you know, when I've got samples, we've got a little bit to get us through, through different tastings. So, yeah, if we start with the, with the chinkapin, Excellent. And these are all cast strength. These are literally straight from the barrel. Yeah, literally. So in this bottle that I've got here, you might be able to see it's very, very dark and kind of cloudy at the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's just the residue from the casks. Now, cast strength, 63.5% that we fill fill the casks. It's pretty standard in the industry. And these samples will be anything between 59 to 61%. They are 5CL bottles as well. So they're double measures. We wouldn't necessarily recommend for you to drink the whole lot in one go in the next hour and a half, two hours. Uh, you know, Friday will be pretty rough. But <laughs> the reason we, we like offering bigger samples is so you can go back to them and try them in different orders. You can try the chinkapin peated and unpeated against each other. And you can also try and make, make, make your own mix of our, of our single malt. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go through them. Yeah, let's kick off with this one. The uh, first one being the unpeated chinkapin. I mean, the first thing you notice is how powerful this is on the nose for a sample. I've got 32 months is my one. Mm -hmm. The chinkapin virgin oak, not that common generally being used in the industry, although more so now. Uh, normally, Quercus alba is used. Uh, Chinkapin is actually Quercus Muhlenbergi, so it's a different type of wood. It's actually slower growing, slightly more expensive, but you're looking for that kind of nutty, sweet flavours. Now, with Alistair trying to pull these all together, the common theme thread we're looking for is lightly peated dark fruits. Now, being unpeated and peated, obviously, if you mix them together, you're going to get lightly peated, mm -hmm. but the dark fruit element's really about trying to pull these different things together. And these are a bit of a sneak peek behind the scenes because they are quite young. Um, and, you know, we're making a young whiskey. And we really want to make a complex whiskey at a young age. And that was why you 
pull all these together. Rather than using, say, bourbon casks, which are used in the industry, 90% roughly, uh, sherry is another uh, percentage, maybe five plus. Mm -hmm. uh, loads of distilleries, as you'll know, do, do that well already. So we're the new kid on the block. Got to come up with a different way to, to make good quality spirit. So this is a virgin oak cask. So this cask has never had uh, anything in it previous to that. It's never held spirit before then. Yeah, that's right, Jess. And um, mm -hmm. basically, that's why it's so dark in color. Yeah, amazing color. Nothing else is taking anything out from the wood. So we get all that flavors. Also means it'll be more advanced and developed than other samples. So you probably won't age these on to 10 years plus, etc. You might age the second fill, but because mm -hmm. these are all first fill, uh, you know, three, four, five, six, seven years old. But let's have a little sample. I mean, there's an amazing amount of flavor in it for that young age, and that, that's really been a virgin oak cask. It's not harsh either, in my, in my opinion, mm -hmm. that you will find from the Quercus Alba strain of virgin oak that's used. And really it's that kind of dark fruit elements, a little bit of nuttiness, as, as I was saying. Um, finish is quite long, quite pronounced. I think it's a really good indicator of, the reason we start with that one actually, it's a really good indicator of how young spirit can be matured to make a good quality, quality whiskey. And it's picked up so much color because obviously when it would have been distilled, it would have been as clear as water. Um, and it's all that color has just come from that maturation in the cask. And this sample, see, it's only been 32 months. So it's really, really taken on a lot yeah. of the color and a lot of that, that flavor from the cask straight away. And I think when you, know, you look at all the, when we go through all these different samples, you notice how they all bring different things. And really this is bringing depth and color to the overall profile because it is a natural product for us there's no coloring mm -hmm. no e150 it's 46 percent or 46.4 percent for the core but nothing under 46 so no chill filtering either and it just builds into that provenance of the distillery we're bottling on site we're maturing everything on razi and you know trying to be a modern distillery with new different casts but trying to get back to the emphasis on what whiskey's given to, to Scotland and the wider world, which is, you know, communities servicing people all over the place. Excellent. So, so yeah, uh, amazing profile. Um, on the nose, you get all that rich, like you say, that kind of dark cherry kind of fruit, stone fruit that comes comes through on there. And then um, what kind of strikes me is you, you do get that kind of, uh, the delivery on it is quite sort of drying as well. You get that kind mm -hmm. of like quite almost tannic uh, if you're, you you use wine as well, that kind of tannin that kind of uh, runs through it as well. Um, yeah. And a nice kind of little shot of wood, which works out really well. It's really delicious. And I've added some water. I think I say, would, would you recommend adding, adding a bit of water the, to these? Yeah, I think, I think, you know, there's no right way to, to drink whiskey as, as, you know, we all well know. But if you're sampling something, I think, Trying at cask strength or without any water, probably in the first instance, mm -hmm. and then add a little bit of water, try and open it up and change it, uh, would be my preference. I, I think that way you kind of can gauge some whiskies uh, are enhanced by, by water. Some don't need it, but you, yep. but you need to kind of find out when you're trying it for the first time. Well, I've, I've cheekily got two glasses, so uh, I'm, uh, I'll add water to, to one of these. And, and the actual casks themselves, I mean, um, I've heard of most cask types, but uh, chinkapin oak, where, so what, what is that type of cask? What is, where, where, where would that usually be? Where, where do you cooper that from? Yeah, that's a good question. So, so it's, it's, also, it's North American. Uh, North oak, American. So it's mm -hmm. white oak. Yeah. It's a different species of, of oak from, from the main one that's used in, in coopering, so you know, a lot of them end up in the bourbon trade, the, and then from there we buy them because to make bourbon it has to be first fill casks. But in this instance, we buy them directly, uh, you know, from the cooperage. Uh, they come over; they're about one ninety liters, and mm -hmm. um, so they're not huge. Uh, yeah, just you know, bourbon barrel size. And then we fill them, fill them on the island, and 
and put them down to, to rest. So we've got two warehouses on site where, the, where, we'll, where we'll stay. Where one's a racked warehouse, uh, sorry, one's a palletized warehouse. Mm -hmm. So casks on their, on their ends, pallets stacked up. Then we've got a dunnage warehouse, which is the traditional style for kind of more smaller batch releases. And then we've got planning permission for a racked warehouse as well. So we'll actually have all three on site. Wow. So. And have you found um, uh, like testing those those different casks from the the different warehouses, uh, those two different warehouses, have they given you like difference in flavors or anything like that at the moment? Is it or is it too too soon to tell? Yeah, I think I think we'll look into that. So things like having the damage and the palletized, and maybe do releases off them. We've spoken a lot, or, or you know, Alistair Day, one of the co-founders, who started the distillery, Alistair and Bill Dobby. Alistair's very much part of the, the, the whiskey creation. Um, we're thinking of doing something where there's just one variable. Mm -hmm. in so maybe it might be uh, the cuts on the on the spirit stills, but everything else is exactly the same. And then it might just be the barley strings and everything else is exactly the same. So you can genuinely compare the, the elements. And I think one of them might be maturation. We've spoken about that. So maybe have a cask, a chinkapin cask, it's on a pallet uh, at the top of the warehouse and then one that's put in the dunnage Mm -hmm. the difference after five years that'd yeah. be cool <laughs> maybe do a release through you guys that'd be cool thanks yeah <laughs> we'll be with you after that <laughs> yeah and with water it really softens it out as well um like those those fruits become really to the fore with uh, when you're adding a little bit of water to this it's really really soft and very very gentle yeah mm. no, well thank then that's Really, you've got to see these as a, as a formula to bring together into the core single malt, but effectively on their own, they should all stand up to scrutiny too. Mm -hmm. but they'll be very powerful in different ways. So you know, red wine is going to be more fruity, uh, you know, the rye, more peppery, mm -hmm. spiced cinnamon. And it's about bringing all those together and laying them. And that's where, that's where the skill comes into the different cast types. So, yeah. It's delicious really enjoying that one um so um for our, our, our viewers um do you want to give us a little bit of a background about about rasse itself like where is where is it in scotland yes yeah. people don't know yeah it's a little island mm -hmm. just off the isle of sky which most people know the isle of sky so that's in the uh, the northwest of scotland and it's situated between sky and the mainland so it's a very very thin island which i don't I should I don't know, we were talking about sharing my screen, but it might be too small. But uh, very, very thin, similar in mm -hmm. size to, and shape to Manhattan. Uh, the main difference being Manhattan's got like, two and a half million people. <laughs> uh, and, you know, when I was there, there was only really Central Park for, for green space. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've got 161 people. Wow. <laughs> yeah, according to the last census, anyway. I think there might be a couple more. Uh, we're actually quite proud of that as well. We've got it on the bottle. Uh, so it says... You know, population 161. Um, I think there's a census due this year, Phil, so we might change it for some point. See that there. That's it. And yeah, the distillery 160. Uh, in terms of working population, about 25% of the distillery, um, the island works at the distillery, or maybe 20%. And um, so there's mm -hmm. about 25 full time workers there, which before the distillery, there was no. You know, no major employer in that regard. And it was actually an old house called Borrowdale House, which was a hotel. Yeah. R&B Distillers, which uh, is the, the holding company they were looking for a site, which, was Bill, which Bill and Alistair were told about by, by Bill's school friend. His wife is from Razzie. He was like, look, you need to come and see this hotel. Uh, it's, you know, it's been run down and, uh, and you know, it'd be a great place for a distillery. So as soon as they went there, they decided that was what they would do. So got the plans together, built the distillery, it been producing since 2017. Mm -hmm. And the, the house part of it, to keep the kind of the tradition of Borrowdale House, it's got six ensuite rooms inside it. Wow. So okay. Inside the distillery, there's six ensuite rooms. They're, they're separated by a door. You can't just wander around at night. But <laughs> Yeah, that'd be crazy. <laughs> it's a pretty cool thing. It's a whiskey hotel where there's a distillery uh, attached. So. So yeah, that, that was it. Um, 
big thing on on keeping as much on the island as possible, hence the bottling and, and the warehousing and, and so on. We've done barley trials as well on, on the island. It's not the most arable of land. But yeah, beautiful place. We'd recommend for any viewers to come up and stay. You're welcome up as well. Thank so you. So we'll get you up at some point. <laughs> I'd love that. Um, very busy this year with staycations and mm -hmm. you know hotel you know in high demand. But the yeah, it's just it's, it's incredible. Really, you get a short ferry. <coughs> excuse me, short ferry from from Sconzer, which is on Sky, so you can drive over to Sky now. Been a bridge there for over twenty years. And then get a short ferry. So excellent. Yeah. I've uh, I've not gone to Rasse before, but I have uh, like many people visited vi vi uh, visited Sky, and it's it's a beautiful part of the world. Absolutely mm -hmm. incredible. Always uh, changing scenery and weather conditions as well. The environment there, but yeah, absolutely stunning. So it must be quite amazing to be distilling and then making whiskey in such a such a, a beautiful environment as well. Yeah, I think in the view, you know, best distillery view in Scotland, some I think was the hashtag that was running for a while. <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's a couple of beautiful uh, other views from other distilleries, but I don't think any beat Rousey. Mm -hmm. uh, you're looking over to Glamig on Sky, so you're looking over to the to the mountains on Sky. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely stunning, stunning place. So, will we? Do you want to get on to the next one? I've actually picked the Peter up. Yeah, I yeah. Just nice getting on to the. The unpeated red wine. Mm -hmm. try, try and make sure no one's got an empty glass. <laughs> so this is the uh, number two. This one's been aged for 35 months. Let's get this yeah, so, so a bit of variation. These, when we actually first decided to, to do tastings on the six cast was with COVID. So we, you know, what can we do to try and get our liquid uh, people to try? And it's pretty brave, I think, actually, deciding to, to release, you know, samples that were two years old because at that point, because a lot of people, you know, there's a perception, but we were really wanted to change that, that. Look at the development and it's actually really interesting to see how things change. Mm -hmm. And this sample's really come on a lot in the last in the last year um, so we'll see see what you think we use three three chateaus or ma three main chateaus yeah so it's chateau margot chateau calen segur mm -hmm. and chateau parma that's some that's some nice nice names from the world of wine <laughs> yeah yeah uh, my my wine knowledge isn't amazing so i i tried to make sure i don't butcher it when i Pronounce it. <laughs> but yeah, Chateau, Chateau Margot as well. Some very expensive and very well uh, respected uh, wines. So some very high pedigree, um, high pedigree uh, uh, wines and, and some casks there as well. Um, and presumably, um, again, for the cask type here, because it's been Bordeaux red wine, French oak, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so... Yeah, see what you think. I mean, the fruits for me come straight through cherries, blackberries. That's that's really what gets me um, all the way through this this sample, actually. And I get a bit of spice as well, which is great. Now, Ooh. interesting what you think. It's, it's more alcoholic, isn't it? Because... Mm. Or at least feels like that because the chinkapin, because of all that, all that wood influence, where with the red wine cast, it's taken a little bit longer to get into the wood. And that's what makes it that little bit drier, I think. And you get the you get the fruit, and then a little bit of spice that comes through as well. And then uh, you do actually get that red wine characteristic, literally coming through about halfway through as well. Catherine Williams, who's um, uh, watching us on the stream live, has uh, been to Rase. Uh, yeah. uh, she was in there in September, popped into the shop. Obviously, no tours at the time, but the building was lovely. And she's looking forward to visiting again soon. So, uh, yeah, maybe maybe go stay, Catherine, if you have the opportunity as well. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. We're doing, you know, we're we're doing tours kind of round the building, and, and we've got uh, 
a gazebo out the front at the moment. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to do tours again. It's, it's quite a small distillery. Um, that's all, uh, like anything in life, it's all about uh, your, your perspective. But we're doing about 200,000 litres a year. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm sure the viewers will know generally that is small. It puts us in a bit of you know, the smaller 10%. Mm -hmm. Still enough to produce you know, a considerable amount of whiskey. But, you know, Glenor Distillery uh, in Inverness doing about 11.5 million litres. McAllen's doing 15 million litres. I don't know what Talisker's doing. I think it's around two million, maybe a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that that shows you, uh, you know, what, what where we're our size, but also what's you know important to us too. So it's very much about the single malt. It's you know smaller volume, um, you know, good quality. Proper craft. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I think so. I think so. Uh, you know, the water's off from site as well, right through the production. So there's a you know there's a well on site, and unlike other distilleries that might you know that have to bottle it elsewhere, not all of them do, as as you know, but quite a lot of them do. They won't use the same water all the way through. So we're using it in the production, mm -hmm. also to water it down to sixty three point five percent to go into casks, and also water it down to forty six point four percent or any other percentage we we, we decide. So. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, Which well, is great to have that that huge amount of provenance that goes all the way from the beginning, um, all the way through to the to, to the bottling stage. And I think that's uh, something that really sets um, whiskey distilleries apart these days. And I think that's mm -hmm. what our, our customers and, and people that we talk to really want to um, get in into that and have that that kind of experience. Um, I think there's a lot of whiskey and a lot of commercialization of whiskey where it's seen as almost like a factory and then you put some marketing spin at the end of it whereas you know the things that you're doing is is all through um a lot of detail and a lot of care uh and yeah like a lot of craft so that you know that's that's the the, the great thing really about about it yeah and i think you know you were saying when the viewers can't remember the lady's name now uh, apologies it was catherine <laughs> catherine yeah so catherine's been to the, the distillery and when you go there, you realize what it's you know done for the community, and, and I think that's really important. You know, mm -hmm. Norman's from the island; he's the operations director. Callum Gillies, who who does the, the social media, you know, he worked off, off the island, and he came back for for his job and to work on Razi. It's generally quite a young team. I think the average is probably under thirty five. Oh, that's cool, so, isn't it? Uh, it's a lot of young people who grew up on the island, went away for university. Maybe had jobs and then they decided, well, I'd like to come back. So they've got jobs through through, through the island. Um, but yeah, just doing big things like barley trials. Yeah, all these things are differentiators, but it's really it's, it's about the core of the of the community. So yeah. What what happens when what happens when you get some more people on? You're gonna have to change the uh, the population count on the bottle. Well, we're, yeah, we're saying so. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see what the census says mm -hmm. uh, when it comes up. The accommodation is actually a big issue on the island. Uh, we've had a couple of new distillers turn up. We've actually got temporary accommodation for some of the seasonal workers. Um, you know, there's not much housing on the island. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, housing is an issue everywhere. It doesn't matter if it's Edinburgh, Cornwall, London, Razzie. Uh, the, the thing with Razzie is very much about the stock and uh, Probably in sim similar way to tourist areas where, you know, they're not always occupied all year, which, you know, it's no fault for, of anyone. But, you know, there's the, we're looking at ways to make sure that there's housing going forward for for new workers. Um, yeah, important, I think, as a community thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, just on the, on the red wine there. So it's really, it's the smallest element that goes into the mix. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's really like the seasoned... You know the seasoning on top of the of the the dark fruits, rich fruits elements. Um, so, yeah, I can really I can really see that how that integrates as well with the um, uh, yeah the first uh, the first cast uh, uh, mm -hmm. chinkapim oak, but yeah yeah it just adds like that extra complexity and that extra layer um, of flavour there that you can uh, you can uh, yeah add it add into the final final mix of things. Yeah, it seems that um, a little bit. 
after it's had a little bit of air to it, a bit softer as well. And I guess it's that mm. that fruit from the uh, from the red wine actually coming out as well. It's really delicious. Exactly. Water helps it mm -hmm. for me anyway on the on the sample. The chinka pin it, it changes it, but it doesn't necessarily make it more palatable. But I think the water from the red wine definitely helps. So particularly on the unpeated. Let's give this a tiny little. But yeah, Alistair calls it the top notes. It's the top notes to the to the single malt. Mm -hmm. That's what he's looking for. But quite a unique, unique recipe. You know, we, we forget that sometimes on 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 Razi because I talk about these casts a lot. But you know, ninety percent bourbon, as we said, and they'll be finished in a variety of things. And when you know, I asked Alistair. You know, I, I joined the company in twenty nineteen. I was like, why these casks? And very much. We're looking to make a complex young whiskey, but also mm -hmm. a lot of distilleries do other cask types and they do it very well. So we need to come up with our own path, something that'll, that'll be a stamp for Razi. Yeah, something unique and individual. Yeah. I think the bottle helps with that too. I think, you know, it's, yeah. The bottle is absolutely gorgeous. So, um, yeah, if you've uh, not seen it, because obviously it's this. This has only been in the wild for a few weeks or months, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, and the design on the bottle here, from the label, obviously the cast types, the, the DNA that you uh, that we're tasting through today, um, and the the texture on the bottle, all the way through to my favourite feature here, the little ammonite, absolutely stunning. Um, yeah. And you know, I know you shouldn't judge a whiskey by its bottle, but a lot of thought and love has gone into into um, into this. So really love this. And that and that guy's from Razi. So all the all the shape of the bottles actually, it's actually a mold from the island. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's the marketing team to yeah. So the shell at the bottom as well. It, it's mm -hmm. uh, it's from the island. Uh, yeah, the whole thing's a mold from Razi. So the idea is, uh, and it sounds a bit like marketing jargon, but it's a, it's a piece of Razi in your hand. Uh, yeah. But it really is. It's the bottle, the, the mold, the, the liquid, the water that's in it. It's been done on Razi. Fantastic. Yeah, lo lo love the bottle. Um, yeah, that's, it's, uh, yeah, really, really silly. Um, oh, we've got Gordon Ferguson on the on our uh, live as well, who hopes to be back in Razé next April. It's his son's fortieth, so um, you might have a, a little visitor from uh, from Sheffield up there, Gordon and their, and their family as well. Good evening, Gordon. Um, so Hi, fantastic. Yeah, I'm glad you join it, and yeah, good. good you, you know, the samples will have moved on again by next April, so you'll mm -hmm. try it again. And that's the great thing about you know you're seeing seeing the distillery on a journey. Oh, that's a uh, delicious. Shall yeah. we um, move on to the the next one? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great. So the um, the ex Woodford Reserve Rye, uh, unpeated as well. So the final one of the unpeated. So we, we, I think we're on matching ones because I've got 33 months as well. Which, oh, wow. Brilliant. <laughs> slightly larger, slightly, slightly bigger. But Just a little bit bigger. You'll, you'll, actually, these are these are mini gin bottles. This is okay. our gin bottles that we used. Um, and we were, you know, we looked to go to smaller sizes, but we liked giving five CLs, as I said, uh, for that reason. So um, I've just got a 20 CL gin bottle. But they're quite good bottles, actually. And so we well, do they, get they, they, they look great and um uh, yeah i mean I, I hadn't tweeted that they were the gin but the gin's really stunning as well maybe you want to um like, i know we're doing a whiskey tasting but uh shed yeah, a little bit of light about the gin quickly, well. quickly talk about the gin so so it's made in our pot still with, mm -hmm. uh, which is what we make the whiskey into so we do them in big in in, in batches um 46 percent little bit of malt spirit in there as well from from our from our single malt Okay, uh, and it's all bottled on Razi too, so yeah, very you know less juniper led, more citrus led. I think that's the key the key thing if we're looking for in flavour. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, good strong gin at forty six percent. So it's a really clean uh, spirit as well. We we do quite uh, a lot of gin, um, but 
from from the the Razé one. It's it's just so clean and it's so fresh. It's one of the ones that we we really like, and I think it's one that you can also drink uh, quite neat. Works really well in in martinis as well. But it's a really fresh, clean sort of style, and it has that lovely sort of citrus notes as well. Juniper not being that big dominant, but really different. And um, yeah, we we really like it. We're big fans of it in the store. Yeah, re really happy with it, and we like to get try people again to try it. You know, gin is a really it's a busy market. There's no, there's no mm -hmm. two ways about it. But I think having that both that spirit, you know, we're showing there's there's quality and we care, and we're not just in it for a flash of the pan. Let's make a gin. Yeah, uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll keep the gin going for a long time and uh, and keep it going alongside the whiskey. Uh, the whiskey. So, excellent. Yeah. So yeah, the rye casks. Mm -hmm. So ex Woodford Reserve. The color on this is a little bit lighter as well. Yeah, yeah, and that. That comes down to the rise taking a lot of the color out of it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, what we're looking for here, this is actually the base of our spirit. Now I didn't do it in the order of how much is, is put in. So the chinkapin we started with first, I think just to set the tone of good quality, young, mature, you know, how the maturation process works. Mm -hmm. This will make up uh, over half of, uh, of the, 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 the formula, the recipe. Now, what Alistair was looking for here really was the differences are, you know, bourbon is very much vanilla, vanilla, vanilla uh, flavor, which is which is great. But here, looking for a bit of pepper, a bit of spice, and a bit of butterscotch. And that, that really lays the foundation to then put the chinky pin on top. And then the red wine, to, you know, give it all that fruit, fruit flavors. Mmm. Yeah, that's really great, isn't it? Even, even I've not added any water, but even at cast strength. That's very easy to drink. <laughs> yeah, I very think... fresh and really clean, and then you get yeah, lovely's kind of like that 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 rye aroma, which is like quite um, still still mold, but that little bit of um, like dark sort of like spice that comes through on it. Yeah, really delicious. Yeah, black black pepper for me. It's like crap mm -hmm. pepper. I can always get that out of the rye, but you know, I, I think these are great. They're really. You know, just just different as well. It just just gives us another element. You know, as a base, you know, bourbon is used or bourbon casks, but it just gives us another little differentiator. It's not wildly different. Mm -hmm. As we say, that subtle notes that, that, that take it on on the kind of ride journey. And although these three different cast types and obviously two different spirit types give you those those six that go into the the dna do you have or have you experimented with any other cast types at all or, or is it just just those that you've got or have you got some other things in experiments took away in one of the warehouses somewhere yeah no that, that's a good question i've actually got a few bottles back here that are a bit bit bit, bit different so we did a chain a chinese release okay exclusively with our distributor there which was mm -hmm. in Sherry, and that's because you know that's what they they, they asked for. It's about eighty percent are these casks, and then twenty percent is everything else. So, and I mean everything else. There's Hungarian oak. There's you know um, different chateaus, chateau mm -hmm. Rothschild, and there's Virgin Oak, <laughs> Columbia. There's mm -hmm. uh, Sherry. There's bourbon. There's four roses bourbon. There, yeah, loads and loads of stuff. But so this gives a real repertoire of different different things. And you know, some might get finished, some might full maturation. But even these, we'll release them in, in individuals. We'll maybe do age, you know, age statements will come effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, the plan is at the moment that what was emptied to make this, that will be the first. 10 year old will be the second fill of those yeah. because all the flavors will be dumbed down because they're all in here in the little bottles and this bottle and then having that longer period will be okay we felt like you know these casts at first fill you leave them for 10 years they're just going to be way overpowered yeah yeah the the oak's going to really take over and you won't get any of the characteristic of the of the of the spirit yeah maybe not so much on the rye but definitely the other two mm-hmm yeah. You're right, you're right. Um, so, yeah, let's see with a little bit of water.
it mellows it out for me. I don't know if it probably having that less cask influence at that age, it probably doesn't need the water in the same way as the other two for me. Mm. It, does, it does seem to make it a little bit more elegant um, and not as like as like as spicy. It really turns down the spice on there, but yeah. I think it drinks really well at cast strength. I think that, you know, I could happily sip that uh, on its own. But what, what I can really tell from going through those three is how how they are all really, really good whiskies on their own, but how adding just a little bit of each one then just changes the complexity and the levels of flavor uh, that are going to come in, in the in the final release. Yeah. And, I, and, you know, and that's great because that, that's what we're looking for. And probably, you know, I, on, on the people who have the tastings, they'll have favorites, no doubt. And they'll drink <laughs> that ones as single casks. They'll probably have a couple. They'll go, oh, I don't want that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the nature of single casks, where if you're, you know, core vattings are about trying to pull the elements together and keep, it's, you know, the, the main flavors happy. Yep. Yeah, no, it's been it's been a good uh, good journey through the unpeated. They're 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 with on the wine arm of the still. There's a cooling jacket, mm -hmm. so we're all, like totally mentally geeky. Effectively, the the peated spirit is heavier because we turn it on for that, and okay. the unpeated spirit is lighter. Mm -hmm. Basically, means to get through the still with the cooling jacket on it has to be really oily to push its way through. If you turn it off, it's just the, the you know, and the regular, um, you know, viscosity. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're going to be a bit geeky, let's let's talk about like the more the process and things like. So, when it comes to um, like the start with the um, the 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 the. the um ferment well you do the mash but uh mm -hmm. generally i guess you do you do the standard three waters that go through yeah yeah so mm -hmm. it's a one ton mash tun. yep and uh, then we're three to five day fermentations you know generally try and go you know more towards the five uh, it depends yep. on how the shape patterns sit but uh, the th fermentations are they made of wood or stainless steel or so they're stainless steel mm -hmm. um Alistair's background is food uh, and whiskey. Uh, his great grandfather did the Tweeddale uh, range. Uh, so, very much the same with Johnny Walker, you know, grocers who did mixing. Mm -hmm. So, he was very much into the stainless steel, easier to clean. They actually have cooling jackets as well. It's pretty, like, it's kind of high tech. It's a semi automated distillery. So, there, mm -hmm. there's it's all manual valve opening. But there is there's a computer there to, to keep everything right. So stainless steel, um, you know, distillers yeast, and we have experimented with champagne yeast as well. And then, yeah, two stills, uh, one wash, one spirit. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, yeah. Um, Just, the, the cooling jacket. Yeah, uh, that's quite interesting. Probably interesting. the main thing. There's actually a carter head, a deconstructed carter head still about... 12, I think it's 12 plates, maybe eight, uh, for also looking to do forms of grain distillation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. Awesome. Uh, and, and, you, and you mentioned briefly about, about Alistair. I was going to ask uh, about him because I've, I've met uh, Alistair a, a few times back in the days from, from whiskey shows. Yeah. Um, and that's when he had like the Tweedale blend. And uh, his, his family have that history of whiskey making and whiskey creation, don't they? Yes, that's, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I also did uh, There's a few bottles up here. I don't know if I can, let me see. This could go wrong. But, uh, <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, we've got, yeah, so this is the kind of Tweeddale range here. Mm -hmm. um, so he recreated the, the original blend. You can actually see some of the single malt bottles. So this is our tasting room. Uh, that's the While We Wait range there. There's some bottles of inaugural above. And then mm -hmm. I'll maybe take you on a little, I'll show you these bottles because the, the light's not. Um, yeah, these are some of the bottles. So this, oh, was, uh, this was the Chinese release. Mm-hmm. Um, so not very few people have seen that, if, if any, in the UK. Oh. Then there was a, a single cast bourbon that we did for members. You can see it's actually quite light when you, you know. Oh, yeah. But, um, and then the inaugural, which was kind of red, reddish tinge. So that was, that was a small release that we did last, 
September. Mm -hmm. And that was finished in red wine. So, yeah, so Alistair, yeah, long, long history. Actually inherited his great grandfather's uh, blending book. And that's when he tried to recreate the old Tweeddale, which, yeah, there's an old bottle that here actually as well. So, um, don't want to. Uh, yeah, you can see them up there in the corner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's, oh, that's one of the originals. Yeah, or yeah, that was his first his first effort at blending from the cellar. Wow. That's like as close to the original as you could get. So yeah, also you know, good, just really passionate about it. And, you know, he spends a lot of time on the island and uh, uh, tasting casks. It's quite good if you can get in the warehouse with Alistair. Mm -hmm. You're always, you know, you're always in for a good time. <laughs> Pulling all the unusual bits out, tasting. <laughs> so, um, cool. Yeah. Will we keep the glasses glasses full? Yeah. So sure. well, we've done uh, the unpeated. So yeah. Shall we? Um, yeah. And we can chat. Yeah. We're not going to like power through. I would recommend to everyone to keep a little bit behind as well. Uh, we can do a little mix at the end. Try and create your own little blend. <laughs> I'll give you a pretty close. Hints of what the what the mix is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, so you met also at some trade shows. Yeah, I uh, I've, I've done stuff with um, for uh, the whiskey lounge um, mm -hmm. uh, going back many many years uh, with Eddie and Amanda when we used to do those, and uh, I met Alistair um there uh, when he just um uh, started releasing his his tweedale range so i was on on the stand with him um helping him out doing the pause and talking about about the about the history of it so yeah met him uh, very much back back in the day a really really lovely guy uh, very enthusiastic but really knowledgeable as well and uh um quite uh, like passionate about about grain whiskey as well which obviously at the time um not many people were were interested in that and that's something i've seen that's really come through in the last few years that people get like realizing that there is another side to scotch whiskey and that is also mm -hmm. grain whiskey is out there and exists and it, and it can be really good but yeah he was uh, he was uh, yeah very passionate about 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 grain and i know he's released some grain whiskies as well but yeah this is this is you know quite a few years ago um when you know people would like well like grain what what is this 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 thing called grain whiskey so yeah just great to to you know meet him and chat with him and um and then yeah just see the development from uh, him recreating his you know his granddad's recipe like you say uh to always you know wanting to have a a, a a distillery of his of his of his own and then seeing the um that that journey all the way through to um where we are now with with with, with the rasse uh rasse um whiskey as well so yeah great great stuff as well but yeah always remember him telling me about about the fact that he had a lot of pride in the fact that this the tweedale blend was, was something that his his, uh, his uh, family had created and yeah like you say he found this recipe book and then yeah done the best he could to, to recreate it as well so yeah you're a really really lovely guy um yeah. interesting yeah yeah great guy and you, that, that's why we've got that plate at the distillery as well you know it's to make sure that we can do some experimenting with you know some high you know mm -hmm. not grain whiskey because we won't get to the 96 and a half percent or whatever no. it is be neutral but but something experimental and you know you never you know the company's still called r&b so you never know we might we might end up with a grain distillery somewhere mm -hmm. uh, borders one day. So there was talk at, uh, at the very beginning of, of having uh, with, um, uh, with Vaso having two distilleries at, at one point, but obviously this has taken taken the focus um, yeah. along along those lines as well. But um, is that is that you know speaking to him is that still uh, a little bit of a plan for him or just concentrating on this one for the moment? Yes. I think I think the focus is on Razi in, in the short to medium term. Mm -hmm. I think you know a lot bigger operation being where Razi is geographically, where you know getting workers doing you know so much on site, it's not as easy as if we didn't do that. So there, there's a lot a lot of parts. Um, but yeah, long term, you know, Alistair's got you know aspirations to to, to you know particularly on the grain the grain side of things, and you know always. Yeah, it was always in the plan, but yeah, Raz is the the focus for the short to medium for sure. 
we just Absolutely. need to get, get, it, get it right and hopefully we are and and yeah see where things go mm. excellent so yeah so the next one we're going to go for so we're going to do the pieces ones in the same order of casks again or we're going to mix up the casks uh, i think let, let's stick to the we'll do the virgin chinkapin oak and yep. then we'll do the the, the the bordeaux and then the rye just so there's cool. a, a bit of a running order but mm -hmm. like i said samples are quite big so what you can do is you can go back and go right i want to pair off the unpeated and peated bordeaux tonight yeah try them that way rather than you know we're going through them in a linear order um, i think that's quite an interesting way to do it well the great thing is this uh, streams being recorded to our uh, youtube channel so um uh, it's all it's up there for forever so yeah you can always come back find uh, find the bit in the stream with that you want to uh, have a little look at uh, and then go back and retaste re as well so uh, that's that's a great thing you can always watch it on on, on catch up as well yeah <laughs> or with the, <laughs> <laughs> and with the, the peat um specification on these ones mm -hmm. um it is, is the peat from a particular place is it peated to a particular ppm what's what's the uh, the story behind the the uh, yeah the specs on the peat so we use highland peat uh, and for that we're looking for a less medicinal flavor profile from the smoke as you would say uh uh isla a wagavula and lafroig ardbeg you know they're looking for that heavy kind of sea you know medicine like smoke which mm -hmm. is very very popular but it is quite divisive what we're going here is for a, uh, almost like a lighter smoke so uh, highland peat it's cut just south of inverness so that's my it's my hometown mm -hmm. and the yeah, so it'll give you a more heathery, less intense smoke. Uh, Forty-eight to fifty-two ppm on the on the on the peated sample, so quite heavy. But Hi. but what you'll find is on the palate and the nose, it probably will come. It'll probably fall at least a third from what your expectations would be. So. Yeah, on, on these chinkapin as well, they're high toast or high char casks, so it's like a crocodile skin on the inside. Uh, that also gives you all that huge kind of flavours that we're looking for, that, I'd say, you know, a bit, bit of dark fruits, the colour, and so on, and that, you know, really bleeds into the smoke as well, so probably not as smoky as you would think, but let's see. I think it's like frazzles, you know, the bar, the bacon mm -hmm. you get in the bars. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know if that's as glamorous as the as we'd probably want. It would may, maybe I should say things like, you know, barbecue ribs, and but I, I quite <laughs> like frazzles. Uh, I, I bring that up sometimes because I love, love a frazzle. Um, it's it, yeah, it's definitely that the fruit and the smoke does make it into something that is quite. Like you say barbecuey, um, as opposed to that that kind of classic, I guess, Isla sort of style, which is medicinal iodine and and sea breeze and, and sea salt. And, um, but yeah, this is this is a, a richer, um, a fuller sort of style as well. Sometimes I find though the um, the other ones to be quite sort of like like attacking and quite citrusy, whereas this is quite big and rich and round as well. But definitely barbecue, stunning. Yeah, no, it's a uh... Firm, firm favourite we find that the peated, peated chinkapin. There, so I'm going to have another sip. Mm. Much more oily as well, which you will find sticks in your mouth. But yeah, really coats coats them at the yeah the palate. I'm trying it with some uh, a little bit of water. And the, the new make is quite sweet generally as well. Mm -hmm. and, and that helps with that that whole, you know, dark fruits kind of element that, that, that's the core thing. It works with sweet new make. So. 
Mm. Savory sweet. Which just with it with a touch of water, what, really. What, what is that? What is that? You know, um mince pie. Am I there? <laughs> maybe I'm maybe I'm just talking rubbish. But. No, no, I can I can see that. Mm. Better have a touch of water. The water really opens it out, um, softens that that smoke a little bit, um, and creates, yeah, brings those fruits really to the to the uh, fore, foreground as well. Yeah, pretty delicious. In our, we do a cask program, which is limited to to sixty casks a year. So we, we sold them out a few months ago, uh, yep. at the end of January. So it's closed for this year, but it'll be open next year. But the, this one was actually the biggest selling cask from an individual perspective. And I think for me, the reasons for that are it's probably the one that's furthest ahead on the tastings because a lot of people do tastings and go, you know, hopefully they, they go, you know, the distillery is doing, doing a good job. They understand the story, what's going on in the island and so on. But I think because this one's probably the one that's, in my view anyway, the furthest along in a single cask perspective. And how many how many do you release a year of uh, on your cast programs? And um, so 60, 60 casks a year. Yeah, uh, maximum. Then, that's that's to trade to uh, export to individuals. Uh, there's two reasons for that. One is we're not huge, so we, you know you don't want to oversell your casks. Mm -hmm. And second, it's a, it's quite a big investment for people, uh, regardless if it's if it's a you know, a retailer, if it's a exporter or a private individual. So you need it to be special for them if they're going to, you know, purchase one. Mm -hmm. And they're investing in the distillery too. So you need Absolutely. to look after them. But that's why, we, you know, you get a nice stay with it and a bottle of core. Uh, and that's just all part of, we're really passionate about people coming to the island and seeing us, particularly if they want to cask, because, yeah, it's great that we're doing tastings and we're, you know, bringing Razi to the forefront. Uh, but hopefully this encourages people to come and see us as well, you know, buy our product from, from yourselves and just understand what's going on because it's... Well, if you bought a cask, then you can go, uh, like you say, stay in the hotel and then look at your cask as well. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the casks are in the damage warehouse. Mm -hmm. So they're all laid out, um, you know, with names on them and so on. So. And some of the comments that we've we've um, uh, got coming up on on the stream uh, again, again from Gordon as well, um, just uh, has to keep reminding himself that it is actually only thirty four months. Mm. So, like you say, on that that kind of um, that journey of maturation, um, it tastes uh, like a, a, a whiskey that's a lot lot older, has a lot more like age un, under its belt. Um, really stunning. It's got that that great depth and richness to it mm. as well. It's not legally even a whiskey. It's just no. a, it's just a spirit sample mm -hmm. at this point. So, yeah, cask can be incredible. You know, uh, we were doing sampling of Alistair last month uh, for the launch of the of the core, and you know, he took us took us through some casks. Uh, Humbolti Humbolti cask from from Colombia. It was four months old, and honestly, it was like incredible. Yeah. It was incredible. It was, you know, color darker than the rye. Uh, just, yeah, just a really, really special uh, sample. Then we're trying ones from casks. Um, I can't remember which where it was from, but it, it was you know, 18 months old and it was like water. Like <laughs> no influence from the cask. It's just yeah. incredible. Um, so, you know, these casks are picked for that. You can't beat the maturation. So we don't pretend, you know, we're that you can beat it but what you can do is you can change the elements to make a good young whiskey mm -hmm. and that comes down to picking casks that will allow you to do that so yeah yeah it's a yeah really really stunning stunning drop that and uh i had a little bit of the um of the 
the unpeated in in uh, this glass over here as well and just going back and forth between um each one as well you still get the uh, the dna of um of the actual of the actual whiskey but mm -hmm. yeah that that dark fruit still remains as well yeah good yeah that's really what we're looking for mm. so yeah if you're um you know if you've got got two glasses um yeah try it um as scott was saying you know go back between uh, the uh, the peat the unpeated give them a give them a little go um yeah. I was it doesn't really change the actual nature of the of the original you know we started out drinking drinking this one it does actually change this comes up a little bit more sort of like bubblegum fruits as well now that i'm getting out of that yeah so and i'll still be delighted to hear that from yourself jeff that you know that the the distillery dna is there because mm -hmm. he really went out of his way on the on the chinkapin and to find the right virgin oak that would not overpower the spirit because you know it's, it's quite easy to see how that can happen um but you know with this softer wood type the slower to uh, you know tighter tighter rings that mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't overpower it completely yeah really really delicious so i guess the next um the next one we're going to go with is going to be the bordeaux yeah yeah let's go on to the bordeaux and that one is a whiskey <laughs> 36 months yeah i've got same same on, on this one it's great so, yeah. you see the red tinge in it but it's, it's yeah. less flash uh, than than it was a year ago. So now mm -hmm. it's getting really it's getting into the wood, and that's helping a lot with its flavours. So that's a little pour. You know, it's good to get feedback on 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 the cask. So you know, it's good to, good to hear from Gordon saying that. You know, it, it it works, and it, I think actually it's a real education as well, just generally to to you know a lot of whiskey consumers, and even to myself. You know, I, I worked, you know, I've worked in the industry in different different distilleries, but to go through these samples that you know are young and and are palatable, drinkable, enjoyable on their own, and see what what's going on, because mm -hmm. you know when you hear it, it's like oh yeah okay, but until you try them, yeah. You know, you're not. You know, you're not it's, it's it's very rare that you get the opportunity to you know taste the individual components, the like the the bits that make up the actual final final whiskey as well. So you know, it's quite quite a, a privilege, really. And and Scott, you say that you've bit, had like lots of different uh, roles. Um, what how how did you get to um, come to Rasse then? What's your your journey through to the yeah? Um, so I've been working in the industry since 2015. I actually did uh, five years in New Zealand and Australia. Mm -hmm. And then I actually, when I was over there, a lot of people, you know, asked me about Scotch whiskey. Uh, I had no idea. And it always annoyed me that I didn't know. So I took a, a tour guiding job at one distillery and then I worked at another one and uh, both close to Inverness. So I uh, don't know, should we be talking about other distilleries? I'll, I'll, <laughs> a couple of distilleries close to Inverness. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Tour guiding, you know, bit bit of uh, kind of brand work, so brand ambassadorial roles, and then when I, I came home to study as an older student, I took a graduation job with Razi, and in, in, as a sales in the sales team, and then you know I now work doing sales predominantly in the UK and and some some exports. So um, yeah, for Razi it was really it was a bit of a dream job. The you know, new distillery, you know, I'm new, I'm growing or trying to grow and, you know, we can kind of go, you know, an opportunity to go with it. And yeah, when I saw what was going on at the distillery, I was completely bought in. Uh, you know, the community is really proud of it, which is a big thing. You know, it's not an annoying business or, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're all behind it. You know, Alistair and Bill are, are both passionate about it. And yeah, the liquid was good too. So win-win fantastic so, yeah that, that's what i mean i'm being from the highlands too i think you know you know about razi and you know it's, it's a bypassed island in a lot of ways people drive through sky mm -hmm. and they go to 
Lyra Hebrides and they don't stop at Razi and it's brought people over. So the community regeneration part is big. Yeah, that's uh, something that adds and has, you know, very long term benefit as well. You know, putting that thing thing back and people actually going to to visit the the, the tourism, and especially with um, you know new distilleries opening up all in in Scotland as well. I think it's um, bringing uh, people to parts of of Scotland that they probably wouldn't have have, have gone to before unless there was a distillery there, there as well. So, um, you know, yeah, it really does help. I think you know be a more vibrant like you say more vibrant community and then also bring money into those places as well which is obviously a, a good thing yeah and good jobs as well you know learning how to make whiskey and you know uh, you know tourism in that in that regard as well it's quite you know it's an enjoyable job it's an enjoyable product you know mm -hmm. you, you're not it's not something people don't want to hear about everyone you know as in, enjoys it and, and you're right jeff you know it's a great way to see scotland you know i've been to Campbelltown to Orkney to Isla, these places that you probably wouldn't go to, you know, mm -hmm. well, I didn't say wouldn't go to, but I certainly wouldn't have gone, made the effort to go to without uh, going to see the distilleries. And yeah, I think it can only be a positive thing. All these small, smaller distilleries, they're still not huge. I think, don't hold me on this quote, so I know this is recorded, but I, I think <laughs> it's under 3% of production is done by distilleries since 2005 mm -hmm. uh, it's around there anyway so that shows that actually there's loads of new distilleries but it's it's actually more about quality yeah uh, and providence rather than volume mm -hmm. um so yeah that that's um yeah yeah and yeah Catherine Williams on, on the streams is now suggesting that um, uh, uh, we, your, your typos are great, Catherine. Absolutely fine. But um, we, we could, we've almost got like a, a whiskey tour from uh, both Sky and Razé as well with the uh, Razé and then Talisco and Torre Vegas as well. So nice yeah. little kind of like loop that you uh, you, you could do um, to, yeah, go see those distilleries. That's great. Yeah, no, um, we actually do all work together, believe mm -hmm. it or not on something that's called the Hebridean Whiskey Trail. So you can yep. give that a little Google. So we, the three of us work with also Harris and Jura. Uh, mm -hmm. and we're speaking to another distillery in an island that's not quite um, with us yet, but they will be. Um, uh, so yeah, no, look, we all work together and it's, you know, obviously that, you know, we're all making whiskey, we're all looking to, to have consumers, but ultimately it's all in our benefit to grow single malt scotch. And that's, it's a really nice industry like that. You know, there's big companies out there. There's Diageo, there's Colonel Ricard, there's Grants, there's Jim Beam Centauri, but they do mm -hmm. a lot of work to make Scotch the brand it is. So they open up markets, they they do big marketing campaigns. That it's, that obviously it's for their brands, but it opens up the whole category. And, you know, Scotch is a brand. It's it's Scottish. We all own it together. So important to grow and grow it as a collective. Definitely. And there's, you know, there is, I guess, room for for everybody on on the on the boat, isn't there? You know, from the from the people doing the big things all the way down to you know things which are more like yourselves, really looking at you know the quality and the, and the provenance uh, of of your ingredients and yeah, the whole whole process. Um, but yeah, I think that, as, as I said earlier, these are the things that really kind of resonate with our, our customers. And these are the things that people get excited about as well. If you can, you know, go to a, a customer and tell them about the individual components and the fact that you're using different oaks and different woods to other people. Um, uh, and even, you know, down to the details, again, as I'm pointing out on, on, on the bottle as well. Uh, people really, really love that and they can really um, become associated and uh, yeah, really attached to, to those, those sort of like uh, distilleries that do that. So yeah, I think it's it's, a, it's a definitely a good thing that's happening at the moment. Yeah, no, for really sure. Really exciting. Is, is, and yeah, like I say, it's not, you know, good good names to be a, a part of from Raza, you know, it's great. Taos is a big brand and Toro Vega doing great things in the south of the sky as well. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, the peated, peated red wine, we should go back back to.
think. Let's hear let's hear your thoughts, Jeff. Actually. The more neutral first. Oh, yeah, I really like this as well. Whereas the um the 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 virgin oak gives it that kind of real barbecue kind of element to it as well, and that richer, meatier sort of style. This is a little bit fresher, and mm -hmm. you do have that um more uh fresher a little bit of attack a little bit of acidity that really comes comes bounce off there it's a little bit more bouncy it's got a little bit more kind of like zip um to to this as well which is really nice and then you get uh, a little bit of that kind of um wood spice coming through wood spice and wood smoke so a bit more whereas this was the first one was a little bit more kind of like meaty this i find like burning embers and like campfires as well um and then also a little touch of grassy kind of note like a little bit of like um hay kind of element on there as well so it's a little bit lighter a little bit sort of fresher um and then with a little bit of that like say wood spice um but i can see how it would be a foil and a, and a compliment to the uh, the previous one as well adding a little bit more um a little bit more vigor and a little bit more zestiness to the actual um, to the actual um, blend when you can come to add these 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 together so um yeah, yeah I, I love this and they'll be using different actually we use slightly different proportions for each batch mm -hmm. to, actually in the beginning it, it, for the next couple of years it'll be a bit up and down depending on which casks are Maybe the unpeated next year will be more ready at a younger age, so we can use yep. them. Uh, for the next batch, it'll be more peated, which is this final batch for this year. So we've done two batches this year, the one here. The next one's about September release. It will be more peated. Uh, and and that's, that just comes down to when the casks are ready, etc. So, uh, yeah, on this one, I think the nose... I don't think the peat comes through that much, actually, but on the palate, mm. it's quite smoky. Mm. Um, and then I agree. I think I, I think that wood smoke is bang on, and it's almost like, for me, like very strong mild wine with a little drop uh, of wood in it. Mm -hmm. Don't think and then you do, it. you do get those red fruits um, as the whiskey open opens up, um, which are obviously coming from the um, the the Bordeaux casks as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very very different. I'm going to just add a touch of water. So um, these are and these are great ones to come back to the the unpeated red wine and the peated red wine because mm -hmm. they're so different. Let's, um, so let's try a little bit of the. It'd be good to hear people's feedback as well on on these samples, and maybe if there's a favourite, or you know maybe one they're like, oh, it, it need, we rather the peated one to the unpeated one. It's great, always great to hear hear what people's thoughts are. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you've got any comments, if you're watching it live, stick them in the uh, comment section and I'll, I'll, um, I'll read them out. Um, but yeah, if you can, again, go back to the unpeated and the peated if you have two glasses. And again, tasting the um, the peatier or smelling the peatier one, the rims on that, then going back to the unpeated one, really brings out the fruit characteristics as well um i think having that that uh that look between both of them you really you really start to understand and um appreciate the uh, the, the depth of fruit that's coming out on on these whiskies yeah very very fruity uh, a bit like diluting juice in a way <laughs> kind of use it in the mix so that's why we're looking at you know 10 15 percent somewhere in that region generally will mm -hmm. be made up of the red wine casks because that fruity element's great, but you know you don't want to over overdo it from the red wine casks. And I guess that um, well, is that this is the first legal distillery on Rasse? I mean, was there any history of like illegal distilling and um, making on on the island previous? Yeah, yeah, there was. So um, 
yeah, first legal distillery. And there's an old kind of ruin where there's a, you know evidence that there was a distillery there. And yeah, I think I think it'd be safe to say there was distilling on on Razi. So a little hideout for um, for um, Bonnie Prince Charlie as well that mm -hmm. in, in, in yeah, 1745, which hence the 45 casks that we released. Uh, that was, so this one was 60 casks. The program before was 45 casks. So we, mm -hmm. we never we try not to release too many, but that was a yeah. So I'm sure they were making some spirit then. Hence he hung out there after. After Culloden, that didn't go so well. Anyway, we're drifting way off there. That now we're starting to talk about Jacobites, but um, <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, definitely legal distilling uh, on the island. Um, it was rife in the Highlands generally. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Highlands. You know, uh, plenty of it in Inverness and the surrounding area as well, um, um, and further afield, uh, you go up to the northwest and so on. And would you think that um, you know it's it's it's, it's quite hard to, um, to to make a statement like it, but you know if there, there hasn't been you know other distilleries on on Rasse, but creating a, a, a Rasse style kind of whiskey of like um, uh, of like the West Coast and the West Highlands, um, uh, I, I guess when you come to a planned distillery, you know was that in mind? Like this is the kind of sort of style the, of of the area that we were going to try and try and replicate or try and create yeah i think you're you're, you're spot on there, there's definitely a template even though there was never a distillery there mm -hmm. so what am i what do i mean by that um you use peat so i think island whiskies generally you would associate with with smoke now isla is a beast in its own it's known for heavy smoke although there is exceptions like puna haba and but you know, known for its peat, very heavy peat smoke. Alistair was really looking for kind of old Bowmore style whiskies. And he really liked those from like the 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. that kind of style. Uh, and that was also fruity, lightly peated. So yeah, I think I think you're you're bang on the money. There's the house that there is a style we're trying to make, which is the lightly peated because of the islands, dark fruits because of the Alistair's style he was looking to make. Mm -hmm. And then also there was no other distillery here, so we could create our own style. Yeah. You're bang on, you know, if, if we were on Sky, you are, you know, Talisker probably, well, Tota Vig is going to make its own route as well, but Talisker own that profile, uh, in my view. Um, and then Isla's got that profile. Lowlands mm -hmm. has a profile. Spacehead has a profile. But we can create our own one. Yeah, so absolutely. I think that was a huge, you know, if there was a distillery already on Razi, it probably wouldn't. Uh, yeah, it probably wouldn't have been that had the same impact because, you know, community wise as well, because um, there would have been employment and so forth. So, yeah, I think. Excellent. Uh, I've got a question from um, Gordon again. He says the inaugural release was a wonderful blend using the Bordeaux, but do you know what the cask mix was on, on that one? Yeah, so our. A 30 second background on to what we did before we had whiskey, which was called Razi While We Wait. Yeah, I think you're familiar with uh, Jeff actually. So it was from a, a Highland distillery where we took bourbon casks and we finished them in Tuscan red wine. Uh, for, and we did five editions over five years, various different times, maturations, etc. So we felt for the first Razi release, so the inaugural kind of smaller batch, it was under 10,000 bottles. We'd do a linking piece, which was basically bourbon casks for two years, finished in red wine for one year. So that's what it is. Uh, but I need to give some context to why it was that. Uh, so it's still peated with dark fruits, but it's just done a different way. And then obviously it then links the independent bottling to this bottle. Uh, although Thanks they are so. quite different, I must say. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that was so, that. Was, hopefully that answers, answers your question, Gordon, for, yeah. for that one as well. And how closely do you think the, the Wild We Wait series have, have come to matching? Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, the, they are different whiskies, but in that terms of like mindset and mind frame of closely how, how uh, the, 
the uh, final outcome. I guess when you build a distillery, you just don't know what it's going to produce until you start running it, and then you kind yeah. of you work with it a little bit and like, okay, we thought it was going to do this, but it kind of does that. So how how close of those those bottles do you think of of, of coming the end? I think all in the same same category, but again, you're right. It's probably not gone. You know, you you don't know. Mm -hmm. So in a in the broad umbrella or or the broad broad spectrum, they're all white repeated dark fruits. Yeah. The the, the the finish the the flavor for me is is different. I think there's much more going on with the six casks. Much more complex. Uh, much more suited to being younger. Mm -hmm. I think the with the while we wait the independent bottling probably less suited to being younger simply because of the cast makeup bourbon than red wine i'm probably heavier on the fruits but in a more direct way yeah uh, rather than layered so more this is blackberries you know yeah cinnamon like boom rather than over time I think well, I, guess, I guess to a certain extent as well, you know, the, the whiskies that we are, are tasting now are, you know, a continuation of the while we wait because, you know, we are, you know, in, in the terms of, you know, some of the things at 30 months as well, we're still waiting for those to become whiskies. And yeah. this is also a continuation of the journey, like the bottles that, you know, that, that, that we are, have here in when, you know, in 10 years time, this will be a completely different whiskey, a different journey for, for those ones. So still the same components, mm -hmm. but yeah, a different, um, a different thing at the end of it. No, oh, definitely. And, you know, we're evolving, we're learning, we're not, you know, we don't always get it right, making mistakes along the way. And I think that's the beauty of it too. You know, yeah, totally. it's, a new, just, you know it's not, it's not all gone smooth, <laughs> but, um, you know, the fact that we can say, you know, I think the bottle's testament to a lot of hard work from, from marketing to the the team that makes the, the liquid to Alistair putting it together and uh, to the infrastructure, you know, it's not easy. You know, Raza is not somewhere you go, this is where we're going to do 27,000 bottles of whiskey in a run. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's no infrastructure whatsoever. You know, there wasn't a warehouse building. There's not a motorway. <laughs> like, yeah, so exactly. The post, the post van's got a bit bigger, <laughs> a lot bigger. <laughs> And I guess also there's the logistical implications, you know, there's, like you say, there's, there's not a road bridge, so everything's got to come on and off by the ferry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, yeah, we work with a haulage company in Inverness called DR McLeods and um, they're very good. Uh, but yeah, like things take time, uh, you know, uh, on the island, if you, if it's not, you know, the post is gone in the morning, if you put something in by 11, it's another day to get off the island. Then it's a day to Inverness, sorting the office, Inverness to the central belt of, of mm -hmm. Edinburgh, you know, Edinburgh, Glasgow, where if I'd sent it from Edinburgh, it would be with you tomorrow, where from Razi it'll take three days, yeah. working days. So. Um, yeah, it's just, but part of the charm, part of part of what it is, and it wouldn't be the same if it was in, in Glasgow had it for, for, for me. No, exactly. So, um, yeah. yeah, in the spirit of keeping glasses full, will we, will we... Let's move on to the, um, we're on to the uh, Woodford Reserve Rye Peated one now, I think, aren't we? Yes, yes, we are. So, yeah, I'm on the same, 37 months. Great. And yeah, I think interesting to see. I, I like finishing on this one. It's probably my favourite child of the lot. But I everyone judge. I don't know if that's because it's a sixth whiskey. But so if you have got any uh, any comments, if you're watching the live stream um, about what you think on the nose on this um, and, and the flavour, pop, pop them in now, and we can uh, we can discuss them as well. Um, but for me. It's it's really tempered um, on the nose. It's really quite quite mellow and quite in the background as well. The smoke on this, yeah, it's not. Again, when you start saying things like forty eight fifty ppm, you expect a lot more in your face. Mm -hmm. A bit much more mellow.
just yeah. For me, it's the spice and the, and the pepper. But this time, it's got like a smoky whirlwind going with it. Wow, it's really deceptive because um, on the on the nose, you're thinking, okay, this is quite mellow. <laughs> this is there's not good. There's you know the smoke is quite tempered, and then. Um, and then as soon as you taste it it's big it's really really huge uh gordon's getting getting a little bit of uh mint coming off off here as well um oh, and gosh. catherine's saying smokiness is woody and aromatic rather than phenolic which is which is just lovely you yeah, correct catherine it is just lovely um and yeah it's just that black pepper and that spice and when you when you drink it the delivery it's all on the center of the tongue it's just like a tickling of spice right on, on the front of the, of the of the tongue just kind of what you'd expect from from a, 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 i guess from rye as well mm -hmm. but yeah this is this is a big whiskey i'm assuming you used just little bits of this in the overall final blend as well yeah i mean so for the rye generally for r01 so or this bottle mm -hmm. uh, more elements of the unpeated uh, but you're generally about 50 50 but the the second one will actually have quite a lot of more of the peat because the peat casks are, are a bit more ready mm -hmm. so yeah it'd be interesting to see how they compare actually and um, we actually we didn't a bit of debate over doing different bottlings but we there'll be subtle differences in the label that you'll but that, that you know the whiskey people will know the mm -hmm. batches, but we really wanted to get the lightly peated dark fruits one skew one bottle out there we didn't want to flood the market with a hundred different skews and confuse everyone yeah. what's razzy style so think of it like to, to the mass market it's razzy whiskey lightly peated dark fruits to the people in the industry who really want to know it will wave a little bit over the next mm -hmm. two three years until we're at a point where the portfolios at a stage where we can make a very consistent batches and that's just the nature of the size it's also the nature of covid mm -hmm. we didn't do that production last year so that probably throws us in a few years time again um so yeah a few few years until we're <laughs> until we're at that consistency of uh of some of the the larger players but this is the great thing about the, about the journey and having um, you know uh, our customers and, and and the fans um uh, with you is that that you know you you people will go on that journey and be like want to know the differences and want to know the subtle uh, elements and, and the changes that are on there. Um, it's a bit like sometimes you know you go see your favorite band um, uh, play a concert and they might play the same set, but it's always going to be a little bit different. You know, they might extend the middle mm -hmm. A or they might might change it completely different as well. But it's always going to have that that characteristic. Um, and you know, you you know, you get fans of, of people go see bands, and, and it's always the same, but it's always a bit different as well, which yeah. is the great thing about it. Being able to compare mm -hmm. bottles um uh, from from the first releases onwards is going to be a great thing and i know we've got some uh some fans definitely on on, on the uh on the stream watching us live who, who've got like obviously the inaugural and, and this release and and some of the other uh bits as well from uh these little single uh cast samples so yeah it's definitely got that kind of like following and, and fans already which is a great thing to have really isn't it yeah it is great and that, that's what we're looking for you know you you you, you need you need people backing you and, and you know whiskey's very much huge it's huge word of mouth and, and people really understand the community is really the whiskey community are very knowledgeable and, and certainly it's changed a lot even you know the six years i've been working in, in it um you know everyone's keen uh, and wants to know so i i think that can only benefit us you know there's nothing to hide there's not you know we want to talk about everything uh very passionate about yeah, be, being being a new distillery and trying to do do it right, we're mm -hmm. non filter, natural color, you know, all these things we've spoken about. Barley trials, so we've grown barley and rasé. So there is some, uh, not many casks, but there's a couple, like six or eight casks. That's uh, nice. Rasé. Mm -hmm. um, had to get particular barley that they could grow in rasé. It's very wet island, so it's basically barley strains that can last from the Arctic. And um, we did trials with UHI, uh, the University of Highlands and Islands. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, great. You know, it's um, 
yeah, we need, yeah, we need followers and people to support us in the journey. And if whiskey on lips helps that, that's that's the dream. Because ultimately, it's about this. Um, mm. Wow. Also, the interesting thing is um, I get a little bit of chocolate kind of notes on that as well um, uh, towards, towards the end. But how the same spirit in those different casks really does change the um, the overall kind of like flavor and, and it, the elements. So it must be great fun to have these um, three different casks, two different whiskies, these six elements to create uh, essentially what what is this this to begin with and it's that's a lot of um it's a lot of notes that you get to play with as well it's a lot of uh, colors that you get to paint with definitely definitely i think it's a tough job for Astro as well too i think he could have made his life a bit easier um <laughs> you know because you know putting six together uh, you know, it's, it takes it does take a lot of balancing and that's why we were very open and transparent about the fact it's going to go a bit like that mm -hmm. uh, until we're at a point where the casks are all you know, we've got a repertoire of casts where we can make sure the tune's the same. Um, so yeah, it's yeah, we'll, we'll see. See how it yeah. develops. It's gonna it's gonna change. It'll the recipe. You know, Alistair will make tweaks as, as we need to. And yeah. so, if um, uh, our viewers at home wanted to recreate like this. Mm -hmm. from our little samples what kind of uh quantities what kind of recipe would you um would you give them yeah so i can't give exact obviously alistair doesn't doesn't give that away but <laughs> we're, we're looking at around half will be the rye yep and then this will vary it will never be probably less than half yeah then the chinkapin 30 to 40 percent uh-huh and the red wine 10 to 20 It'll be in that in that areas, and that you know really rise the base. Chinkapins the sponge, and the red wines the the, the icing. The little top bit that just gives yeah, it its, its its polish and it's like trebly kind of notes as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, what I what I would suggest is um, keep keep some of your um, your samples back as well. Keep some of those back, uh, <laughs> and then I'd also suggest purchasing a bottle of the. Uh, the, the new Rasse as well. And then, yeah, seeing at home, if you can um, try and replicate this with what you've been uh, been given tonight. Yeah, and they are, they are, it is the first core batch and the, mm -hmm. the distinguishable batch. We're not telling people how it is, but it will be. So just something to bear in mind. Because, um, you know, we do want people to drink it as well, but... Um, Absolutely. First ever... You know, first core release you know the inaugural was obviously the first bottling mm -hmm. but a very much a standalone uh, you know our version of while we wait and then this is this is where we're going well just some feedback from uh people watching the stream tonight the uh we've got samara who who's on um really enjoyed both the rye casks rye casks seem to be a particular favor of uh, virginia who's also watching as well uh samara the peat was a great sequence of flavors so really enjoying the um the progression between those um and as i said earlier you know it's just you, 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 those cast samples really do change the the, the nature of it mm. uh the black pepper note um really really stood out uh, for samara as well so yeah some great great feedback from uh, everyone on on the stream as well that's great that's great and yeah, it's good to hear because the pita is, is the is the foundations of it, and that and that black pepper is something Alistair was really keen on being that differentiator from bourbon. So, yeah, hopefully you just enjoy it all coming together as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, over time we will be releasing, you know, single casks. It, it will take time, um, but you know, it'll happen. I'm sure. Excellent. Well, I think that kind of um, kind of wrap draws it to, uh, I guess, I guess a, a little bit of, a, of, a, of a close. Is there anything that you'd really like to add, Scott, at, the, at this point before we? No, um... just thank you for having having me and, Thanks, and you know and showcasing the distillery. You know, it's independently owned, uh, and yeah, it's you know we need we need to be to, to get to to you know 
great consumers and and you know thanks for thanks for helping us helping us oh. along the way well thank thanks for coming to join us uh for this tasting thanks for this incredible insight um to the process and the story behind uh, uh, the, the, the whiskey as well and the distillery. Um, uh, thank you also for, for sharing these amazing little cast samples. It's, you know, it's incredibly lucky. It's incredibly rare that you get to taste the actual DNA of, of the distillery of, of, of a release, you know, the different individual components and especially, uh, cast strength, uh, whiskey. So, you know, we're, we're very lucky and, um, very privileged to, to, to have those. So, um, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I can't wait to come visit you on, on the Island. I'm sure, um, a lot of our viewers and a lot of our um, customers are going to be yeah, really excited to come up and, and stay. Um, yeah, you know, Catherine's saying she's really excited to come see you in 2022 as well. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, just to come stay on the island and just to be, yeah. you know, just to witness it in 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 its glory and then you know you know become a guest for a very short brief time on, on the island part of that community as well all part of the bigger whiskey community but yeah to be part of the actual uh uh, uh Rassay, uh community would be would be fantastic so um yeah i can't wait to come come visit be an honor and a privilege as well to, to come there yeah no we'll definitely get you up it'll be great great to, mm -hmm. great to have you up and and you know any of your customers as well let let us know you know it's great great to you Great for you to come up and see and and try these samples further down the track too. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, fab. Well, if you um, uh, yeah, if, if if you get time, guys, um, yeah, go, let's go uh, let's go visit visit the distillery. Be be fantastic. Um, well, it just leaves me to say thank you. Thanks for, for joining us uh, this evening. And um, uh, if you're watching it again, uh, uh, thank you very much. If you do have any questions or anything that you think afterwards you want to um, uh, discuss, um, just, just throw us a line. I can then throw um, any questions up to, to Scott as well at the distillery. Um, thanks for joining us on this um, uh, broadcast this evening. We've got loads of other virtual tastings that are up, up and coming. Come visit our website on uh, starmoreboss.com or starmoreboss.co.uk uk either will get you there go to the events page and you'll see what we've got up we've got some natural wine we've got some uh, tequila and mezcal so some more sort of smoky things versus smoky whiskey uh, uh, up and coming we've got some new product releases and we're going to be doing little micro tastings as well uh, so little short 20 minute sort of like uh, elements where we'll just be bouncing in new products and bouncing out again as well so lots of things coming up on on the channel um, either check out our website starmoreboss.co.uk on the events page or even simpler if you want to get notifications from this youtube channel hit the little subscribe button just down there um, and hit that little like button and little thumbs up that always helps with our um uh, our, our youtube channel as well so yeah just easy to say uh thanks ever so much thanks scott for joining us uh and we'll see you next time cheers everyone Lunch. good night bye thanks thanks <laughs>